that Annie's there. I know Brenda was in the group that was on before. So to wait for her. Morning, Jennifer. We're getting a late start this morning, so. Good morning. Okay, here we are. Okay, I think that's everybody that was on before and we have a quorum. Um, I see that Monica Prince has her hand up. It's... Monica, what's um, up? Yep, thank you. Um, I just had a couple of things to say. One in- Okay, in Monica, we're not ready for public comment yet. We're still getting the meeting organized. Okay. Sure. So we'll give, we'll give you your opportunity as soon as we get to that point after we have the roll call. So you can hang out if you don't mind for just a minute. Sure. Thank you. Okay. I think we have everybody that we were expecting. So uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Taylor to call the roll with apologies for everyone. We had a few technical issues to start the, the morning and uh, we're getting ready to start the meeting now. So um, Taylor, would you call the roll please? Juliet Ballard. Marta Larson. Um, I'm present and I am participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present, calling from Milan, Michigan. Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson was excused. Jennifer Green. Present, from Ypsilanti. Ellis Herzig. Present, from Ann Arbor. Jennifer Heckendorn. Present, calling from Ann Arbor. Brenda McKinney. Present, from Superior Township. Annie Somerville. Present from Ypsilanti City. All right. And is Juliet an excused absence? I don't think I received any emails. Okay, I'll follow up with her afterwards. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> now it's time for public participation. I'm gonna call on Monica because she's had her hand up and has been patiently waiting. So go ahead, Monica. <laughs> Monica? Monica, you'll need to unmute yourself. Okay, there okay, you there. All right, um, <clears throat> just a couple of things. One is I realized that the um, link to the Zoom meeting that was on the agenda is the wrong link. So you need to change that along with all the other complications you've had. Um, but mostly I wanted to just thank you for the um, workshops on the safe seniors being safe is I thought it went really well and I was really impressed with all the content. Um, and I hope to see more things like that happen. And um, I, I'm hoping that we can get more participants involved. So thanks a lot. I think that was um, the work of Brenda and her team. And I think they did an awesome job. Thank you for your comments, Monica. Does any uh, commissioner wish to respond to Monica's comments? Thank, thank um, you for the comment. I would like to comment and say, Monica, the next one we have, we are going to have um, more people participate as far as uh, bringing the seniors together. So we will be reaching out to you to help make that possible for the next event. I'll be happy to help. Thank you. 
I would say in response to your first comment about the link being incorrect, I, I believe Ashley already wrote that down and it's probably going to handle fixing that um, for the future. So um, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Ashley? I will. Ashley? Sorry, just to clarify, um, did you did Monica say it was wrong on the agenda or wrong on the website? On the agenda. Yes, on it the is the agenda. agenda. It is on my to-do list after this to fix all of the templates to have the correct Zoom link with the meeting ID and passcode. Just just want to say it is correct on the website. If yes. anyone has issues getting, you can always go to the website. Perfect. Thank you. This always happens when we have staff transitions. So everybody just, uh, you know, has been very patient and that's awesome. Okay, the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the June 2nd meeting. Um, at this point, uh, does anyone want to make a motion? So moved. I acknowledge Brenda as motion and I see Margaret as supporting. Um, do you want to call the roll? Julia Ballard. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Jennifer Green? Yes. Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn? Yes. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Annie Somerville? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is a debrief on the safety town hall. And I asked Brenda to put together a report on that. So um, I'm going to let her sort of take over and tell us what she's concluded, give us information about participation and um, et cetera. So Brenda, would you go for it? Yes. And in, if any of the committee members want to chime in, please do so. Um, I'd like to first thank the committee. Um, uh, the committee who helped put this town hall together. Marie, you did an awesome job with the flyer. Jennifer, you were great. Marta, uh, Elizabeth, and whoever reached out and, and helped us. I wanna thank you all. Without you guys, it would not have been as successful as it was. Um, one of the things I wanna just say that we, um, the speakers, um, we had excellent speakers. The participation was great. The room had lots of energy. Uh, people really, really cared. Uh, they were interested. And again, like Phyllis said, and thank you. Um, I'm sorry, Monica. Uh, it's something that the community wanted. We had, as far as, um, and, uh, Jennifer, chime in anytime because you really helped me with this. We had uh, the Congress De Congresswoman Debbie Dingo talked about the post office scams. A lot of things that we weren't aware of, she brought to our attention. I had to mail something the other day and I took it directly to the post office. I didn't put it in the mailbox. Um, we had um, Cherise Smith from Arian Aging, she talked about internet and Medicare scams. That was great information. And we had um, Eugene Rush from the Washtenaw County Sheriff Department. And he talked about safety. He shared so many things that I'm sure a lot of you who attended were not aware of. Um, it was great information. And as far as the, uh, we, I think I would say we had at least 80 people, at least uh, Jennifer, you had, you got to sign in sheet. It was about 40 people who signed in. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And I think we had, I would say seven to 80 people. The room was packed. Um, the organizations, oh, Bank of Ann Arbor was there. They did an awesome job. They had, and I think that was your contact, Jennifer, is that correct? Yes. Okay, they did an awesome job. They had, um, I didn't realize Bank of Ann Arbor had like a, a special program that targeted those kind of things for seniors. And uh, they want to come back again next year. We had Habitat for Humanity. They couldn't make it, but they did provide information. 
of Food Gathers, uh, the National Alliance on Mental Health Illness, Washtenaw County Catholic Social Services, uh, Friendly Celine, uh, Humane Society of Huron Valley, uh, Medicare, Medicaid Assistant Program, Housing Bureau for Seniors. Did I leave anyone out that you can think of? Phyllis, did you have someone there, your organization? Oh, yeah. Um, Jewish Family Services have um, representatives there as well. Okay. And I picked up this identity theft booklet, a recovery plan that actually I, I bought at home and I was just looking at it yesterday. It's resurfaced on my desk. It's pretty amazing if you, um, you know, get caught in one of these scams. It tells you what to do, who to call, right. and what are the steps. Um, Is I'm that the one from sure. Bank of Ann Arbor? Is that the one from I Bank of? I think it was from Bank of Ann Arbor. Yes. And yes. So uh, I think maybe each time we have one of these events it would be great to have these available um, well they do because, want to come back <laughs> yeah each i don't know about you all but every day now because i'm sort of alert to the term scam more than i was it, it's every day there's another example um today was the uh about the irs so um yeah, it's a good service that we would be doing. And as far as the attendance go, we had seniors from Ypsilanti area, Ann Arbor, and I'm not sure, and we had some out county residents there. And um, the way we got the information out was, uh, this was our first time. So it's a, this was a learning curve for us. So the next one I know will be better. But we did contact, we had information put in some of the local churches, uh, the Washtenaw County um, put it on their website, Destination Ann Arbor Convention Bureau put it on their website, Chamber of Commerce put it on their website, um, Washtenaw County Parks and Recreation posted it in the Recreation Building, uh, I know for a fact, Jennifer took some, Jennifer, did you take some to local supermarkets or just to churches? I did both. Both, okay. Mm -hmm. And we did, and people did Facebook friends. So there was a, we had a lot of different avenues, ways that we got the information out to the community. And uh, we did have some problems with the seating at the township because they didn't have rails. But I was told that the building, they built that auditorium like in the 70s and those were not the requirements back there for, um, you know, I guess for handicap accessible. Margaret, you, had a, you got your hand up? Uh, yes. Um, you know, just as an aside, um, I had, I don't know whether you read the Ann Arbor Observer, but they had something in there, I think this month, a woman from their staff, I guess, is putting together information about the mailbox, um, um, stolen mail. Mm -hmm. And so you could, you could, I get part of it online. So I clicked on it and they were asking for information. So um, I've been corresponding with her and she's trying to put together information about that. So stay tuned and watch the Ann Arbor Observer for um, something about stolen mail. Um, it's, okay. um, it's just another way to get information out. And I wonder if they do, um, as I was thinking about this, if they do, um, pieces like put something about our uh, events in there for free. I bet oh. they do. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Taylor, you had a question? Um, just to, <clears throat> to ask Ashley, is if we have copies of all of the information of the pamphlets, can we put that on the website for people to have access to for those who didn't weren't there? So sorry, just to clarify, when you say pamphlets, do you mean from the presenters or just from the event itself? Just like the event itself, like Phyllis was saying, she has that that scam stuff she wasn't aware of, just things that those who weren't present, they can still keep getting that information or if they forgot to grab something okay. or were yep. interested. It's very, yep, it's it's possible to put that on the website. Um, it'd probably just be like a PDF link. Um, but if that is something the commissioners wanted, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I would also just like to point out, um, Brenda, we, uh, the county also sent out a press release um, about the event as well. So that was another, oh. that was another piece of okay. the, the public, like the publication that um, I'd be okay. happy to do it for future events as well. Okay, great. And I would just like to say that for our first event, all I can say is that it was awesome. It was great. Me, I think so. And the, the the vibe and the information and what I enjoyed about it was that the seniors had an opportunity to share their own personal experiences. I mean, and, and I thought just hearing some of their experiences was just good to know that. And they ne they needed someone to talk to. And and they had the they had the audience there to listen to them. And I, you know, there's so many things that we can say about the town hall, the goods and the bads. Um, but we're gonna have future town halls and we can just keep in mind that we can, we, we're learning from our first event, how to make the second one and the other ones after that even better. And our plan, our committee, we plan to have um, one every year and um, if possible, and I'll be more than happy to help organize them. Um, and we would like to do something on the Western part of the county next year. So I think we could just, I would like to for us to focus on that and think about some of the things that we can do for our next town hall. And um, I think that concluded. Does anyone have any questions, more questions? Anyone? Jennifer? Yeah, not a question. I just wanted to mention um, also that Debbie Dingle uh, put out a blurb in her weekly newsletter out to um, a constituents about our event. And, and that was really nice. And they also uh, recorded it for their Facebook page, uh, Debbie Dingle did. So if anybody would like to go back and look at that. Um, and the, the other thing that, um, Brenda and I were both approached uh, by people who had different ideas about future town halls. And the one that really stood out was that people would like more information about advanced directives and end of life planning. So that's one thing that people would like to see something on. Right. And I forgot to mention that um, one of Debbie's staff told me they got a call about the event in Washington in their Washington DC office. You were, you heard that, right, Jennifer? I thought that was that's, amazing. Yeah, that's correct. Someone called her uh, her mm -hmm. DC office to to find out more about our event. Good work, um, Jennifer. Uh, Brenda has volunteered to lead a subcommittee to do this uh, future planning, uh, and so we could take up to four additional people that want to be on that subcommittee. So um, I think. You can either make yourself known now or send uh, Brenda and myself an email. I see Jennifer Heckendorf. I would definitely, yeah, definitely like to be part of that. Oh, definitely. And Marie, we need you. Sure, I'll come on. Actually, we need the whole team. So we have to be cautious to only have, um, you know, we can only have five people because of quorum issues. Okay. That doesn't mean everybody can't pitch in and help, um, you know, publicize and do those sorts of things, but. Um, well, let's put our thinking caps on and like, I wish Julie was here. Maybe she can help us with Dexter. Um, 
uh, wherever you, you know, wherever the western part of the county. I represent and Manchester and Bridgewater and, and that southern western half. And so I'm I'm happy to to pitch in. Okay. And if you know, like we were discussing Marta and off Marta and I, if we can't get like a town hall, we can use a church or a venue that's large enough. So there's a lot of different places that we can, you know, have an event in the outer, the western part of the county. Mm -hmm. Phyllis? Uh, Phyllis? I, I just wanted to um, uh, support the idea that Jennifer said about the, um, the legal steps that people need to take um, planning ahead. And um, I guess uh, concurrent with that, um, some a friend who was recently widowed told me that it would be so helpful to know what do you do at the time of a death? Who do you call? What are the steps? And mm -hmm. um, I think that would be really, really helpful. You know, it's something we all want to avoid thinking about. But, yeah. um, you know, every time I, for me, if if I know what's involved and have the information up front, it's less scary. So. I agree. I agree. Those are all really good ideas. And I, I think that Brenda's been writing them down and I've been writing them down and we will, yeah. we will get back to those ideas and we have plenty of time to plan for next year. So we'll have to do it in a less rushed fashion than we did this time. Can you imagine how well It'll be next year. We have all this time, you guys. And we only had like, what, two or three months? OK, excellent. If nobody else has any more discussion on the town hall, um, thanks everybody that participated. And thanks everybody that you know worked to make it a success. And Mart, I have a, a, a write up for you, too, and I'll send it to you today. OK, we'll put that in the end of the year report when we okay. report it up to the County Board of Commissioners. I think. Um, one of the things that Jen, Brenda and I talked about is keeping track of the uh, keeping the sign out in sheets and keeping track of that so that we know um, maybe in future years we'll remember to get them out right at the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things I'd like to see is some sort of analysis of the sign in sheets so that we know whether we're who we're reaching in the county and how um, what areas of the county we might want to step up our publicity efforts in and those sorts of things. So that's what we'll do with the sign in sheets. Okay. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the Washtenaw County Senior Health Dashboard. And I managed to tag myself to do this presentation about that. So I am going to share my screen. Presuming that I can remember how to do that. Just a minute here. Miss Sharon. I think everybody can see that now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, what I, um, I what I'm doing here is not doing an in-depth discussion, but uh, sort of an overview discussion, uh, just to get everybody started on knowing there are two different uh, sources for data about aging adults that I've, um, I'm going to talk about today. Some of the reasons that we want to have data about aging adults, you know, first and foremost, we want to make sure that when we do a needs assessment, we're representing the population. So if we do a needs assessment and compare all the data to each other, we can determine whether we've uh, actually um, identified the population. Um, of course, we want to look at areas where we might improve services or improve our outreach. And sometimes when you do a needs assessment, you find things that are uncomfortable, but that's where you get change from is discomfort. Mm -hmm. So what we want to be able to do with data is compare our activity data to the county demographic data, um, like we were talking about with the town hall to determine if we're reaching the entire county. Sometimes it's helpful also to be able to compare local community efforts to the population in that particular community. 
Um, and it's sometimes helpful to be able to look at what did we already do and what are the strengths and weaknesses that we can find through the data. And the last reason that we wanna have data sources is for when we write grants. Uh, they often ask for needs assessment data. And if we have access to some of these sources for data, it's really helpful. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna talk about, first of all, the Washtenaw County da Data Dashboard that's on the Health Department website. Um, I was startled to find out that they had a database like this uh, posted on the Health Department website. And the way I found this out is I, I contacted the person who puts up their dashboards and asked if they could put up one. And she said, oh, we already have one. Mm. So that goes to show you what I know. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, if you go to healthforallwashtenaw.org, you will get this page right here that we're looking at. And if you scroll further down on the page, you will get a list of community dashboards. And if you click on community dashboards, where I have the red arrow, mm -hmm. you'll find one called the senior health dashboard, along with a lot of other ones. Um, yeah. And um, the reason I knew about the health department dashboards is because we put up one for Whitmore Lake and Northfield Township about a year and a half, two years ago. And that, of course, is an area that I represent. So I guess I'm not getting on the dashboard collection very often because I didn't even notice the senior health dashboard right above ours. So if you click on the senior health dashboard, then you will find a whole bunch of information. Um, and some of the information is divided out by category, um, mm -hmm. you know, health, community, economy, environmental health. And some of it is very specific to adults age 65 plus. So the list on the right is not a complete list, but a pretty close to complete list of things that you can find about adults that are 65 plus. As you can see, there's things about specific diseases and uh, conditions. There are also things, information about uh, vaccinations, um, about screenings that take place, about cost of care, um, and some things, uh, preventable hospital stays and hospital readmission rates that can help you assess the uh, overall health of the entire county or an individual community for adults that are 65 plus. There's a lot more there than, than I ever imagined that you could find. So there is a legend. Um, if you look, when you're looking at the um, dashboard, this is the way it looks. And you'll see this little blue tag off to the left where it says, see the legend. And this is what you find when you look at the legend. Um, there are all these little pictures and you probably will have to go back and forth remembering what's on the legend, but in general, red is bad, green is good, and blue is, un, you know, like not applicable or whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. They have like a um, speedometer kind of dial um, so that if it's the speedometer needle is way over to the left, what you're seeing is in the best half of the communities. If the Little speedometer arrow is way over to the right, the values in the worst quarter of the communities. So you can sort of assess the state of the situation in the particular community. The health department has set targets for accomplishing certain things. If it's got a green check, you know they're meeting the target. If it's a red X, they're not meeting the target. Um, there are um, comparisons to single values. There show trends. They show compared to the previous value and then uh, whether it's significantly better or worse. And, and in this place, they've um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, num colors in addition to red and green. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you zoom in on zone in on a or zoom in on a particular topic of interest, in this case, I was thinking about healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this particular uh, indicator is adults who've had a routine checkup. Um, you can see that uh, they talk about why it's important to look at this category. They talk about where Washtenaw stands compared to Michigan, to where it was the last time they checked and whether the trend is going up or down. In this case, it's going up. They show you gra a graph of the years uh, going by. And if you look down here at the very bottom, you'll see that you can also click on census places, zip codes, and census tracts. Hmm. Um, depending on what you're looking for. So if you dive into that healthcare access and quality, adults who have had a routine checkup, as I said, you can um, uh, look at county census place zip code and census tract. 
And when you do that, in this case, I dove into zip code. Um, adults have had a routine checkup. You can see that um, the darker the color, the um, oh, fewer adults have had routine checkups. Uh, so you can sort of focus in on this little area right here and see that that maybe is the one you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at that and thinking that maybe the um, student population, I'm not sure about that college student population. So that would require some more looking around, but 48104, which is representing this darkest area, I think is campus. So um, that may be something that doesn't really apply much to aging adults, but it would be worth looking into. And Marta, where's 48, on your chart, where's 48197 and 48198? It's so small, I can Here's 48198 right here. You see so what does that what does that mean? And here's four at one nine seven. So four those are Ypsilanti. Yeah, right. those are Ypsilanti so, zip codes. But it looks to me like four at one nine seven has fewer adults that have had routine checkups. And what about nine eight? Nine eight does not appear to be in quite the same situation. Really? Uh, yeah, I find that very interesting. So it's something that needs to be you know dug into maybe more deeply. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. And this is also from 2020. Uh, oh. Sure how it would have changed in the, in the last couple of years. And one of the things to look at, think about when you're looking at these data sources is that they're almost always a year or two or maybe a little bit more behind because of the time it takes to compile the data. Well, in 2020, we couldn't go. That was the peak of the pandemic. So exactly. we weren't even allowed to go anywhere. Right. Or even if we were allowed, we were too scared to. Exactly. <laughs> so then if you dig in and deeper um, into census places, and because of where I live and where I'm representing, I focus in on Northfield Township. Mm -hmm. uh, I was interested to see that the area of Northfield Township that is the zip code for Whitmore Lake, mm -hmm. getting fewer routine checkups than the area around Whitmore Lake, which is the more rural area of Northfield Township. So what area does that cover in your township? The rural area, is that like? It's the area bounded by, um, I believe this is eight mile. Oh. This is Dixboro. This is. Oh, okay. Probably speaking Pontiac Trail or Joy Road. And this, hmm. I'm not sure what the name of this road is. Um, okay. It might be Maple Road. Hmm. But then you can see other areas of the county, um, you know, where there's even more impact. And this is the area, little area we were talking about before, the 48104. Mm -hmm. But this sort of gives you a sort of place to dig around and, and, and look more closely at the data. In our case, um, in Northfield Township, we're working on health equity in Whitmore Lake. And it looks to me like we have some pretty fertile ground to work in because that's the area that has had the um, lesser performance in terms of adults who've had routine checkups. You know, yeah. Marta, I'm wondering where they're getting their data from. Are they getting, because in 48197 and 98, they have a lot of different places where you can go and get checkups. Is it like we have the Hope Clinic and different places like that? Are they getting their data from there or they get it from U of M or St. Joe? Well, the, the earlier and, you know, um, when, when you actually go to the live website, they, they cite their data sources and where they're getting it from. Oh, okay. I will say in Whitmore Lake, there is no healthcare clinic whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So that we're working on trying to resolve that. But um, so then if you dive even deeper in, in this case, I dove into the, the Whitmore Lake, let me go back for a minute, the Whitmore Lake census tract, which is this area right here. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can, you know, dig into the even more information there. Um, and you can do this for any part of the county by following the same process I just followed in terms of zeroing in on areas. And as you can see between 2019 and 2020, the number of adults who've had a routine checkup dropped. And we've already talked about the fact that it's probably caused by the pandemic. Just right. So then- um, Marta? Yes. Is I'm kind of, um, I forgot kind of how we, what, how we dug down here, but is this 
all adults? Yes. Oh, all adults. Okay. Yes. Right. And Dina, did you have something to? Yeah. Um, the the data that they use is largely national, um, like surveys, like census data. There's American Community Survey. Okay. Um, I I don't think that they get any data like from Michigan Medicine, you know, like that that granular. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, and also I just wanted to mention that the Healthy Aging Collaborative, um, was the ones who in, was instrumental in getting this senior dashboard put up. So mm -hmm. we actually, um, identified all of the elements that we wanted on the dashboard, uh, and the health department was, was very accommodating and, um, there's certainly more, um, data points that could be added and, um, I can share more about that, you know, at some time, if you want to know. Mm -hmm. I, and kudos to the Healthy Aging Collaborative. Like I said, I, I asked the county to put up this dashboard and they already had it, thanks to, to you all. Um, <clears throat> Very interesting. So another thing that I focused in on was preventable hospital stays, because I thought that might be interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, they break out the data by gender. I clicked on gender over here in this collection of and got the breakout um, by gender. And then I went oh, again and I went back and unclicked gender and clicked race and ethnicity. Uh, you're not able to click both, unfortunately, but that also gave a breakout um, by race of preventable hospital stays. And of course, the extent to which you can prevent hospital stays means that you're increasing community health because you're providing care to people before they end up in the hospital. And this is for the Medicare population specifically, so this would be 65 plus. <clears throat> Another topic that I looked at was housing and homes, and I was interested to see uh, what kind of renters, uh, how renters are um, spending their household income, how much, what proportion of their household income they're spending on rent. This particular uh, data point breaks it out by age. And if you notice uh, 15 to 24 are spending, 68.6% .6 of them are spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. And if you look at the 65 plus population, they're nearly in the same situation. So Renting? These are renters that are spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. Wow. Which is an unsustainable, you know, financial situation to be in. So, Marta, if our population of seniors in Washington County is what, about what, 21, 22%? Of the county. So. But this is only talking about renters and it's not dividing out. Um, this is only 60.3% of renters, not of seniors. Oh, okay. These are renters that are seniors. Okay. And um, I just wanted to sort of illustrate how you could break out the data. And again, okay. like I said, when I started, I'm not trying to train you all on how to do this. I'm just trying to make you aware of what's available so that you can dig around. I would encourage each one of you to go up on this website and sort of horse around and figure out what you can find out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> particularly if you're wanting to focus on a specific area of the county. Right. The other data source, and again, I'm just going to give a quick overview of this, is the Washtenaw Opportunity Index, which is housed at the Community and Economic Development Department at the county. Mm -hmm. And this um, is more focused on um, equity throughout the county, um, looking at um, strategies and tactics that foster human potential, uh, to give the county some sort of framework to make decisions about equitable opportunities within the county. And uh, they define um, opportunity as having the ability to choose. Um, they state that Washtenaw County is one of the most economically segregated parts of the country, mm -hmm. not in the state, but of the country. Um, and yep. what they're looking at is disparities in safe and affordable housing, quality education, employment, adequate health care, and stable neighborhoods. And some of these things are available uh, in terms of data that specifically point out seniors. 
Hmm. They have um, 16 indicators they're looking at. I think the one that most closely corresponds to some of the issues we've been talking about is the, the column under job access, particularly the transportation costs and extreme housing burden. Those are things that I would expect. And then maybe under health, the life expectancy and health insurance coverage. Those are the things that you could sort out from the opportunity index. Mm -hmm. um, you can break out your data by city and township boundaries. You can break it out by categories and you can break it out by census tracts or look at demographic information countywide. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that you can do on the opportunity index. And I should say to get to the opportunity index, you just go to the Washtenaw County website Mm -hmm. and click on opportunity and look up for community and economic development department and then look for opportunity index. So the thing about the opportunity index that I really, really like is they have a really detailed user guide, really detailed. So if you wanna go up there and, and look around, I would encourage you to get their user guide. And here's an example of what you can get out of their user guide. This is a screenshot of uh, their data for, I think this is 2020, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they have the county broken out in terms of what they define as access to opportunity. Dark blue is the very high access to opportunity and dark red is very low access to opportunity. Um, and this focuses right here, the very red area. Um, mm -hmm. Ypsilanti and Ypsilanti Township. I was interested in this graphic because in 2016, when they did the same thing, um, Northfield Township here, this mm -hmm. area here was dark red and this area here was pink. And now it's four years, five years later, we've made a, we've moved in Whitmore Lake from very low access to opportunity to low access to opportunity, which I think is a very positive development. Um, you know, it would be better if we had very high access to opportunity, of course, but um, it sort of illustrates for us that some of the community efforts we're making um, are actually paying off. So Marta, what years were those? How often is this done? You, This one here, I believe is for 2020. Let me back up and see if I can find that was it. My, that was my question, Margaret. How often yeah, do they do 20, that? This is 2020, yes. This is 2020. And what did you compare it to in your township? They did one, I think, in 2015, I believe. And you can find that when you go on the Opportunity Index uh, website, you can look back to 2015. There's okay. a place where you can click to look at the older map. Um, and so I would encourage each of you to sort of dig into your area that you represent and see okay. what the picture looks like and how it's changed from 2015 to now. I have the same question, Marta, that Margaret had. How often is this updated? Is it well, every ten, five years, 10 years? I don't believe they have a, oh, Ashley may know that. Ashley, go ahead. I do. Um, so we're actually in, in the process of updating this right now. Um, so the resolution states for it to be updated every, um, every other year. So we're working on getting this updated with OCD and the Racial Equity Office as we speak. Hmm. The more data is coming, so you should become familiar with this um, tool that you can use to sort of assess. And I would like to see going forward, the Commission on Aging uh, as a group become more familiar with this, uh, these two sources of data and start using some of this information to evaluate where we're getting in terms of how the county is doing and services and um, things that are available for aging adults. Mm -hmm. So then the other thing I did was I tried, I made a map showing a, where are the adults 65 and older. Um, so the highest proportion of adults 65 and older are in the darkest shade of blue. Really? The lowest proportion are in the light shades of blue. And this here is student territory, I'm pretty sure. Where's my area, Marta? Superior Township and Ypsilanti area on that map. A little blurry, isn't it? Yes. Well, this is this is Northfield here, so this mm -hmm. is Salem, so this would be Superior. And where is Ypsilanti City in a township? Down here. Oh. So the highest percentage opportunity 
opportunity or the highest percentage of adults 65 and older, Superior Township has a pretty large proportion of them. I know, I'm one of them. Aren't we all, or many of us? <laughs> um, and I would say that Northfield and then some of the counties on the west and south of the, uh, some of the townships on the west and south of the county are in their um, larger proportion of adults 65 and older. And I'm not sure um, to what extent that correlates with home ownership, but that would be worth looking into. That's, yes. Um, I would like to see home ownership. Right. So, I, and I, oh, that's the end of the little slideshow. I'm going to stop sharing so we can all see each other. That was nice. Thank you, Marta. That was real nice. Like I said, I wasn't attempting to, you know, turn anybody into an experienced data manager overnight by doing this, but um, I wanted to give you a sample for what you can find. And I think that the extent to which each of us is aware of these tools and able to use them um, would will make our commission stronger. So mm -hmm. I would encourage each one of you to get up there and fool around with both of these tools. Um, and I will turn this PowerPoint into a PDF and have a, um, Taylor send it to each one of the commissioners so you can sort of remember the links that you I followed to get, how did I get to those two tools and uh, the, the little bits of information I shared. Anybody have any questions or other comments? No, just that that's great information. But 2020 was a bad year. It was a rough year for everybody, mm -hmm. yes. I see yeah. Dana has something. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that the health department told me that um, that they are, you know, they're willing to uh, put up other data, even if they don't have access to it, but if, if they were given a data source. So one thing that, you know, um, we have been considering is, uh, you know, if there is a data point that we wanted to start collecting countywide um, that we could, you know, like uh, WHI, you know, thin chart could be, in, you know, instrumental in helping to collect that data through something very simple like an Excel spreadsheet, and we could give that to the health department. So if they just, if they have the data, they can then upload it into um, their, um, the dashboard. Uh, so it doesn't have to be limited to like national census or American community survey, but, um, at this point from, they don't have necessarily the capacity to collect that data themselves. I don't think, um, but it's just something that we can keep in the back of our minds that there may be some other ways that we can, um, populate that dashboard. And I will say that the things that they have up there right now are things that are self-renewing. In other words, if a new data point from the sources that they've already indicated comes up, that just automatically loads onto the dashboard. That's one of the advantages of having a dashboard like that. Um, <clears throat> so in the Northfield Township, Wetmore Lake area, like I said, we are looking at these data sources with an eye to, are we getting anywhere with the efforts we're making in health equity? And I see the Commission on Aging is possibly using these data sources to find out if we're getting anywhere uh, in terms of aging adults and their experiences, life experiences. <clears throat> Brenda. What I would like to see is um, data on seniors, how many uh, 65 and older or 60 and older who is renting because the rent increase for housing has gone up so much in Washtenaw County over the last few years. That's something I would really love to see uh, so that we can see what, what direction we should be going in as far as renting for our seniors, housing. Because like right now, it's like I'm hearing rumors that it's like $1,400 to $1,500 to rent an apartment. Now, how many seniors on fixed incomes can afford that? I think that's definitely been identified as an issue. I know when we, I, we have done the, I have done the report to the county commissioners in the last two years, one of the things I've stressed to them is that um, <clears throat> although there's a lot of work being done on affordable housing, affordable housing is not actually affordable to many people. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, it's actually above their ability to pay. 
So uh, this needs to be addressed. So I think we need to dig deeper into that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Jennifer? I guess my question too would be whether or not those renting uh, statistics include assisted living, um, if those are included with those, because that's a much higher uh, rate per month. Yeah, I was just um, you know, made aware of that by a friend who's placed her father in assisted living in the last couple of months. And when I heard how much they were paying per month, I nearly fainted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's incredible. And I don't know how anyone, or there is no way anyone on social security could possibly pay the amount of money that's being charged. So if you don't have social security plus some sort of pension or other savings, you are definitely in trouble if you need assisted living. <clears throat> well, it's information we definitely need, Amarta. I agree with you. I know that the Healthy Aging Collaborative has been, you know, flagging that, <laughs> and uh, we're flagging it, and um, we're making the county commissioners aware. Um, but I'm not sure exactly where to go from here in terms of trying to fix that situation. I would hate to see a situation where we have to sign up every senior for um, Section 8 vouchers, but we may end up being in that position at some point. Okay, so that's the end of the data discussion. Um, now it's time for subcommittee updates. Um, does anyone from communications have anything to update the commission on? I'll take that as a no. Um, what about the ARPA group? You know, um, I was kind of hoping that Annie could address that. I think I think she probably has a better idea of where that ARPA funding is. It's not very um, transparent at this point. Annie, do you want? Um... I guess I don't, I, the ARPA RFP? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking about? Where, where are we? Yeah, where are we? Yeah, so the RFP has been extended because there were updates made to who's eligible. So that process happened back in early June mm -hmm. and was published publicly. So I guess I, if you could be more specific on what you mean about not being transparent, um, I'd like to know. Um, I think it was all published on, you know, on time with the, the new deadlines. I, so I, think I have a question. Um, so it was published and that there wasn't a lot of time. It got extended and that was all published. And then after a handful of, of meetings that I know uh, some senior agencies had had with the county, they took it down. Um, and I was trying to communicate with Ashley during that time. She updated us that they were making some updates. My understanding is that it's back up now and there was a meeting on the 27th about it, um, but I don't, I was not able to go to that meeting. So I'm also interested in an update and, and maybe Ashley has that information if, if any, you don't. Okay, yeah, those, that's not something, that's not a meeting that I attended because it was for agencies that, or people who are interested in applying. Um, Ashley, do you know if that recording or anything was published from the pre-bid meeting? I'm sorry, you're talking about the meeting that we scheduled with agencies to meet with administration. Well, it's like Is that what meeting you're talking about? Yeah, there was just a lot of confusion over why it was taken down, what's changed since okay, it's gone I back can clear up. up. And yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, so I spoke to several senior serving agencies, older adult serving agencies in May and got feedback about the RFP. And I spoke with the administrator on the need to expand the scope of who would be eligible. So that's why the RFP was taken down and extended. And it was taken down and it, it we updated the eligibility after he was able to have a conversation with agencies who would be eligible um, or who, who do older adult work. So that was the process. 
So, um, Annie, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but um, I think that the extension was June 30th. The and extension was until July 31st. Oh, okay. I, I thought in our minutes it said 30th. And we originally extended it to the July, June 31st, yeah. but because I had several conversations with older adult agencies about the different requirements and who would be like automatically excluded we had a i had a conversation with the county administrator he had a conversation with several agencies who do older adult work and then we made changes after that okay. to make sure that more people were eligible for for funding well that that's that's helpful and the uh, the other thing that i wonder about is how are these going to be evaluated they are evaluated the same way we put out any um, RFP for anything. So there's a criteria that is followed and then there are recommendations made. By the, the Board of Commissioners? By the Board of Commissioners. Okay. Um, Dina, did you have something you wanted to <clears throat> bring up on this? <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> a couple things. Um, I attended the meeting on the 27th and it was largely focused on um, what some of the work of the Say Yes to Seniors group has been doing, um, specifically around a potential senior millage. And there was conversation around, um, you know, just the idea of how the county can allocate funding towards seniors. So it was not a meeting that really was specific to this ARPA um, request, although it was loosely tied to it because of the broad nature on, on funding. Uh, but also to your point, um, Margaret, uh, one of the, the things that were very, is very like confusing with the RFP. And even as at, at that meeting on the 27th, it was still confusing to others that um, it, it appeared the way it was written is that it was only geared towards agencies who had uh, like lost money because of COVID. Um, but that's not the case. That is one option for how we, um, an organization can apply for funding. But there's also opportunities for new initiatives or, or new programs uh, for agencies to get funding for. And that was not well known, uh, even at that meeting that I was at at the 27th. I was at that same meeting. Is that the one at the service center? Yeah, right. I was at that meeting. And so was Phyllis. Phyllis was there too. Um, yeah, I guess I thought we were talking about ARPA specifically right now, but the meeting on the 27th, that was something that came out of the meeting that I requested with Administrator Dill. We had a meeting early July, specifically with a few agencies to talk about the ARPA dollars. In that meeting, it was requested by Administrator Dill that we have a follow-up meeting with older adult agencies to talk more broadly about county um, services and the county's role and how we can work better with older adult agencies. So just to clear up any confusion, that meeting was a follow-up meeting to a conversation about ARPA. That meeting wasn't, wasn't designed to be specifically about ARPA. Um, it was more of just a, a first conversation about the larger scope of older adult services in the county. So this is the one that was on the 27th. Yeah. And um, this, let's see. I know the two board members that, that was anyone else there other than Phyllis and I that attended? I don't believe the Commission on Aging was invited per se. I yeah, it wasn't. It was just for agencies. It was not for the Commission on Aging. Right. Well, I so got it was never. And the, the purpose of the meeting was specifically to agencies who serve older adults. OK. So if other people got invited, I wasn't part of that, but it was specifically for older adult agencies. Well, I'm glad I went. It was very interesting. Um, Annie, um, when some of these happen, um, is there a reason that that the um, Commission on Aging wasn't invited? I mean, 
it's yeah i think to clarify i mean specifically on this because the commission on agency like this is an advisory commission that um has like a scope and then the conversation with the agencies that do older adult work that spurred out of just the need for the county to be more looped in with those agencies for a number of reasons both like funding and like coordination and and future just like lack of communication sometimes so mm -hmm. the different the major difference is that this the commission on aging is an advisory commission for the board right. um so that's the major difference here and it's not right. to exclude people but like the agencies that do the work um are you know experts and they have a little like there needs to be like different conversations about different things and so this commission and the reason why you have a commissioner from the board of commissioners on this commission is because i'm the liaison between this commission and the county mm -hmm. so i guess like they're they're it's not to exclude anybody but like when we set up like that type of meeting the purpose of that was to improve the system and i guess the commission on aging it is a commission focused on older adults but it's not an agency providing services but hey annie i went and i think that was it was a really good meeting and uh, i'm glad that i went because it helped me to understand what's going on and some of the needs and um mm -hmm. for the different agencies to mm -hmm. service our seniors so mm -hmm. it was a good thing for yeah. some of us to be there to know yeah, I'm it would help us do our jobs too mm -hmm. yeah i'm mm -hmm. happy if we want to like pull something together more of like a town hall to have like an open community conversation around this. But yeah, I think that's great. I'm glad that you were there. I just don't want others to feel like there was like a, it wasn't like intentional. I just, there are some meetings right. that have to happen that can't just be open. Right. Um, if that makes sense. I understand. Mm -hmm. Taylor, would you mark the attendance record to show that Juliet has joined us? Yes. And Juliet, would you identify where you're participating from? Dexter, Michigan. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go back to what we're at. Phyllis, you had your hand up or? You're muted, Phyllis. Um, I attend that meeting in part from the uh, being part of the uh, Say Yes to Seniors um, uh, Collaborative. And I, I have to say that I was extremely frustrated. Um, Brenda, I'm glad you thought it was a good meeting. I was very frustrated and I picked up from other attendees there that they were very frustrated also. I think it was not clear the intent of this meeting, who called it and what it was for. If Administrator Dill called the meeting, he was not clear as to the purpose of this meeting he stood behind all the people sitting around in a uh, in a U shape at uh, you know at, at tables. He stood behind and walked so that at least some people had to turn around to in the very beginning that he would be leaving halfway through the meeting. And that um, uh, Commissioner Hodges would be taking questions in his absence. Um, you know, Annie, I I I understand your your point. I I didn't mean to. I hope I never insinuated that we were purposely excluded. I was just kind of asking the question um how it how how that was determined i don't i'm not i don't think we were purposely excluded but um so let's not let's not go there 
Well, I think um, it I can't. Have sorry, guys, I'm there. dropping off my car right now, and so I can't respond to that. But I will in a few minutes. Okay. And I, I think um, Phyllis was in the middle of speaking, so um, I think Phyllis, you want to finish your point? Yeah, I think um, the the agencies that were present expressed all the whole range of needs that seniors have from housing to transportation to health care to um, all kinds of, of needs and that the agencies work for at, are continually looking for funding and sustainability and the response from the uh, administrator was well it would be much easier for me if the if there was a senior millage that um, was for everyone and it, it would not be designated funds now we know that agencies in some instances prefer non-designated donations uh, of funds because they can use it wherever they need it. So he was advocating, it, it, I felt, for a, a millage that would um, take care of everyone's needs as, as it was determined in the future. Whereas I think those of us who have um, been involved with um, senior issues know that there are specific needs that are um, particular to older adults and, and, and they are interactive and they grow in intensity and that the proportion of the uh, population in, is going to increase in terms of older adults. So I found it very frustrating for him to have kind of set his mind as to how he was going to um, perhaps influence the board of commissioners. Mm -hmm. um, there was another point I wanted. Um, I think we need to be kind of cautious not to get too involved. And um, is uh, it possible for me to just respond really quickly? Yes. Um, and I apologize. I'm. I was in the middle of dropping off my car at Costco, so it got pretty loud um, when I was trying to respond earlier. Um, so I, just to back up, I. I was not in, I was briefly in the original meeting that was called by me and a few of the agencies to improve the RFP scope. I had to leave that meeting early because I was actually at a conference. And at the end of that meeting, I, I guess this is how the follow-up larger conversation um, on the 27th was scheduled. I, it was scheduled without, like, I couldn't be there. I was, I, I work during the week in Lansing. So I was not able to be there. I am sorry to hear um, that it didn't go as well as um, I would have hoped. Um, I appreciate the feedback. It was really supposed to just be a general conversation about what agencies are doing and how we can improve the system together. Uh, it sounds like maybe I need to take the lead on having a different meeting and and just to clarify, because this is the first I'm hearing about that meeting. Um, I kind of expected I would get some feedback from folks if it went wrong, but I hadn't. So this is the first feedback that I'm getting. Um, so I apologize um, for people who were there who left frustrated. That was not, um, I don't think that was the intention of anybody. It's certainly not my intention. Um, so I will reach out to the agencies that were invited. Um, I do think that it probably wasn't the best idea to have a conversation about services being provided and how we can improve the system together and say yes to seniors because 
Um, although that a lot of the folks that work at the agencies in the county are involved with say yes to seniors, I think that's a totally different conversation. So maybe we need to have a few conversations. Um, and again, it's kind of separate from this commission. So maybe at our next meeting, we can set about set aside time for people to share with me specifically from the Commission on Aging, your thoughts about the system. I've heard some of the feedback today, like Marta, when she went through her presentation, she was pretty clear. Um, but if if folks want to make space during one of our Commission on Aging meetings to share with me your thoughts, um, I'm happy to take that. I, I And again, I apologize for um, anybody who left not feeling like it was a, like a functional meeting. So um, please accept my apology on behalf of the, the county. And um, I will follow up with the agencies who were there to get some more information and see about having a, a separate conversation. Thank you. Annie. Thank you. And I, think I, have, I have my hand up, Marta. Brenda? Yeah, I would like to say, um, Phyllis, when I said it was a good meeting, it was a good meeting for me because for me to understand where everyone's at as far as the millage goes, because I learned a lot. I left from there feeling a little confused, but it was a good meeting because now I know that the millage is really something everyone wants from the agencies. Um, if you recall, I did express that I would much rather see the county go in a different direction if possible, other than a millage, find other ways, maybe take some money from here, from here, and come up with a, um, money for senior programs. Because I did express that it would be a burden on seniors for them to have an additional millage. Some seniors can afford it, but I did express in my community, it would be hard for a lot of seniors to have an additional millage on their taxes. So, um, I left from there seeing that the agencies was uh, one of the millage for funding to help the programs continue. So correct me if I'm, am I, did you see that? Am I right, Phyllis? Or did you see that too or what? Is that what you heard? Uh, uh, as far as the millage goes? I think that's agencies have lost a lot of sustainable funding that they were mm -hmm. counting on and they right. spend huge percentages of time um, going after funds. Um, mm -hmm. So they think that a, a millage would be uh, would be helpful. I, I heard your concern and I think you are uh, uh, you broke up that, I didn't hear. and that's good um someone might be and i don't a way that depending on someone's income uh they wouldn't have to pay uh the millage i i don't I didn't quite understand that, but but that's something to find out about. Um, I, think, I, I think maybe we're kind of venturing. The other thing the that that I thought <clears throat> what? I think we're kind of venturing pretty far into the millage discussion, and I think maybe this is not the forum for that right now. Uh, we have a subcommittee that's talking about the millage question. Sorry, I think we need to be very clear that. The Commission on Aging has not taken a okay. position one way or the other about a potential millage, which is why we've called that subcommittee the potential millage subcommittee. I think also related right. to this, and we'll get into it uh, in the next section, is the county fund mapping project, which I think many commissioners on the Commission on Aging feel that we need to know how the county is currently spending funds before we make any sort of um, endorsement or lack thereof of a potential millage. So I think we'll talk about that more when we get down to the report from the Board of Commissioners. Um, but if we can um, sort of set aside the discussion about whether a millage is needed or not until that committee can meet and discuss it, I think that would be really helpful. 
Okay, can I just add that um, uh, Administrator Dill said that he is putting together a white paper due by, uh, I think, the end of August. I'm not yeah, sure what all it's going to include has to do with what millages have been um, in place, how long, when they're up for renewal, what that whole um, scheme uh, looks like at this point. I was confused because I thought he had been asked to put together um, a whole plan for what's coming up in terms of the millage and um, it, it was due in April and there was no um, mention as to why it had not taken place. So I think that contributed to the frustration and the um, confusion as to how everybody can work together, which was his opening point, was how everyone can work together to build a community. And it felt like um, it was not happening. <clears throat> okay, we'll we'll get back to this subject when we get to the fund mapping project report. Is there anything else from the potential millage subcommittee? Um, I, I suspect that they're not ready to make much of a lengthy report, but Marie? Nope, that was about it. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. you. And Marie, do you have anything from the moving forward subcommittee? No, we were not able to have a meeting. Um, and so unless Margie has any updates on the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation aging consultant. Um, Margie, do you have an, any updates from Chris no. on that? Okay. I, I, then I don't. I think it's I think it's moving forward. Um and and Chris hasn't really reported and the Community Foundation Legacy Committee hasn't met. We meet early in uh, August. Awesome. Yeah, so no new updates from us, Marta. Okay, thank you. So getting back to the county fund mapping project, um, we asked the county to account for how the county is currently spending money on services to aging adults. And I don't believe we put a, time, a deadline on that. I think that maybe some, maybe, um, I think we were talking about it in March, um, so it may have seemed like we had an April deadline, but I don't believe we put a deadline on it. But we did um, ask the county to account for how they're spending their funds now in services to aging adults. And I don't know, Annie, if you have any update on where that project stands. So the... The county has set aside money to do that, but that has not started yet. So there's no update at this time. And I would recommend, you're welcome to, I would recommend at the next meeting, you you could have a resolution on the agenda to recommend that the board take action on such a timeline, but that would be the like action, like an actionable item that the Commission on Aging could take related to any sort of window or timeline for that. So noted, we will put that on the agenda. Um, Brenda, did you have something on that? Yes, I did at that June 27th meeting, I did ask the question about that and they, I was told they don't have it. They don't have that information. So I like Annie's suggestion yeah, I think that's a very that we should do that. Very good idea. Okay, so we're on to the agenda item called report from the Board of Commissioners. We've talked about the county fund mapping project. We've talked about the ARPA RFP. Annie, do you want to report on the open seats uh, situation for the Commission on Aging? Um, I don't really have anything to report on it. Um, 
yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to report on it. I will note that on our agenda, the link to apply for those open seats is listed on our agenda. Um, I think that each member of the Commission on Aging should reach out to their contacts and inform them about the open seats. There are three open seats. One is, um, oh dear, District Eight. Eight. Um, and then there are two at large seats. Um, and I think the extent to which we can reach out to diverse elements of the community to increase the um, demographics and diversity of this group um, will make it a more successful effort. I would like to see those seats filled soon um, so that we don't um, end up losing the opportunity to hear the viewpoints of the additional potential members on the commission. <coughs> Is there anything else, Annie, from the Board of Commissioners that you'd like to share? I think anything that I would have had has been covered, so nothing additional. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda is a report from the chair. Um, I know that there was a AAA 1B legislative conversation that was held recently, and I think Phyllis was there, and I asked her if she'd report a little bit on what she heard from that. So Phyllis, would you do that? Um, yeah, that was June 26th, I believe. And um, so, the older Michigan, Michigan. Phyllis, I think you're breaking Canadians. up. Phyllis, you're breaking up a lot. Would you turn off your video and see if maybe your, your oh. voice quality improves with that? <clears throat> okay. Um, it was on June 26th. Is that better? Yeah, yes. that's much better. Thank In you. terms of sound. Okay. So, um, the uh, older Michigan, Michigan, no, I'm, I'm having trouble reading my writing. Michigan, Michiganians Day Michigan platform was presented and um, includes support of families, um, strength and direct care uh, workforce, long term care ombudsman program, uh, increase access to home and community based services, uh, expand access to Michigan, my choice. Um, and the AAA 1B platform uh, is similar to the uh, this other platform that was read. Um, and then various um, people on the call asked for um, specific um, causes that they see as uh, important to their county or um, district. So, and I'm just going to mention the um, these needs that surfaced because uh, I th I think they were I learned a lot that they were so um, and it, that they need advocates to be client to speed up their bread I, I don't I don't have the whole I, I or I can't remember exactly what the issue was but to to improve their registration for um, health care um, veterans need to have an advocate which seems that doesn't seem fair to me Okay, um, the adult foster care in uh, rural areas lack direct care workers 
um, because of the low um, uh, low uh, salaries that they receive. Um, this was also an interesting issue that I had never considered before. Uh, I did know that there's a, a program for grandparents raising grandchildren, and that has been expanded to kinship caregivers. Um, and there's a need for intergenerational housing that's more affordable. Uh, one of the issues with the kinship caregivers is that their income is makes a difference to whether or not the the child that they're taking care of is eligible for funding for government funding and this so you have um, maybe, well, doesn't have to be a grandparent, could be another kind of relative caring for a, a child and, spend, and, and their income is borderline, but it's taking too much of their income to provide the care. And then the... Um, the child is not eligible unless uh, the numbers align properly. So, so these were issues that were brought up um, as part of this senior services legislative conversation. Thank you, Phyllis. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts on that? Was anyone else? Here? at that conversation, I was not able to be there. Taylor was there. <laughs> Do you have any insights from that, Taylor? You want to Maybe add? you have some other comments, Taylor. I think, I think you covered it pretty well, Phyllis. It was definitely just to try to get some viewpoints, but we timed it to the point where it was legislation ended up in office, like at like their meetings to finish up the budget. So we had representatives as opposed to their actual presence, which it was good, but it was more, it turned out to be more of like a conversation. And I believe that we're planning on having another one. Okay, excellent, thank you. Yep, I will keep the COI updated as well. Okay, excellent. Okay, other news from the chair. Um, do, does the Commission on Aging want a more thorough presentation on the Opportunity Index? In other words, do you want me to find someone to come and do a tutoring session, or do you think you want to explore it first a little bit yourselves and see whether you need to do this? I would like to try to explore it first, me personally. Okay, let's check back in a couple of months and see how people are doing. And, um, you know, we can always try to find someone to come in and do a more thorough presentation. The other thing is, it's been about a year since I reported out to the um, senior center directors in the county about the work of the Commission on Aging. So since Monica's in the audience, I'm going to let her know that um, I'm available to do that again, if she would like. And also, I will at that time offer to present at any senior center that wishes to learn about this or work that's being done by the Commission on Aging. So I'm just going to throw that out there as a possibility. Brenda, you have your hand up? Yes, that's two things. Um, how are we going to go forward with the resolution to the Board of Commissioners to request the mapping for older adults, their, what services they're providing? That will funding. be an agenda item at our next meeting. Okay. And number two, I just want to let you know, I'm meeting with the... Um, we're having lunch with the um, at the senior center center in Ypsilanti next Tuesday, so um, just want to give you a heads up on that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> Before we leave, report from the chair. And, and is there any other? I think we need to add an agenda item, which is general comments from commissioners. Is there anyone else who has anything in specific that they need to bring up at this time? 
Marie here. I would love to have the Healthy Aging Collaborative come and talk about the Transportation Summit. Um, I know the report's almost done. Uh, Dina, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, um, the report is actually um, out on our um, website, and we're working on getting it out to the um, participants at the summit. Uh, and I can I can send a, a link to that so you can put it in your minutes for today. Excellent. Um, and we're working on a press release to like get it out <clears throat> widely. But um, I'm happy to. Uh, come and um, do a presentation on on the report, which you know sort of summarizes the the work that we did leading up to the summit and the summit, and can give you know some updates on some of the follow up work that's going on right now. We will discuss that at the next officers meeting and schedule that. Uh -huh. I think it would be awesome if everyone on the Commission on Aging could get a copy of that report, whether they were at the Transportation Summit or not. So if you can make arrangements for that to happen, Dina? Yeah, I will. Um, is, uh, is it Ashley or Taylor? Taylor, I'll send it to Taylor. <clears throat> Thank you. So you'll be hearing from us about a future opportunity to talk about that. Okay. Brenda, you still have your yeah, hand up? I have, um, but I was gonna say I'm meeting with the Ypsilanti Township uh, center um, coordinator, and I'll share with you any feedback um, that I get, and you can address them when you go around to your meetings. Marta. Please let her know that I, the director know that I'm available to come and speak to the seniors at their center if they would like to learn about the services for the, of the um, work, I should say, of the Commission on Aging. Okay. And they can contact me directly by email or through I the can I'll give her your email if she has any, you know, anything she wants to uh, connect with you on. <clears throat> Thank you, because mm -hmm. I know I spoke last year at the Ipsy Senior Center, and I thought that was a really good experience. Um, and I felt like the seniors were pretty interested in talking about the work of the Commission on Aging. Her name is Passmore. I've never met her before. Have you? Her last name? I'm not. Okay. That I can remember, of course. You know the memory. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, um, we don't have any new business that I'm aware of. Um, our next meeting is August 4th at 9 a.m. And I believe at that time, Chris Lemon is gonna come and speak about the county strategic plan process and where they stand and give us an update on that. Um, is there anything else before we adjourn? I was wondering, do you think we need to have a um, committee like reports um, like we have for the millage, um, communications. Do you think we need one for town hall or not? I think that we're gonna put that on the agenda, Brenda, as a okay. sub update. And then if you have nothing to report, that would be fine. Okay. So, but we'll keep that as a marker. And that will also mean that we'll keep track of who's on that committee because it will yeah. be on the agenda. Okay, good. So if anyone else on the Commission on Aging wants to volunteer to be on the town hall committee, we have a couple of open spaces there. So feel free to step forward. So just a reminder, it's so far it's you, Marie, Jennifer, and Margaret so far. And did someone else say they wanted, and myself, did someone else say today they wanted to volunteer? I, I believe that I just got voluntold. I did not actually volunteer. So, oh, you're on it. You're on it. You're in the committee. I'm sorry. Well, I don't think I. I don't think I volunteered either. Um, if you need people, I would join you. But I, if you don't, that's Margaret, fine. we we need someone from Pittsfield. You know what? We really need is someone from the western part of the county too. So I guess that would be Marie, right? Yeah. So right now on the committee, you have Jennifer Heckendorf yourself and uh, Marie, that's who's on the committee right now. And we will see who else steps forward and take And Mar forward. Margaret just volunteered. <laughs> okay, Margaret, that was okay. maybe what you intended, but you're on. Okay, okay. Thanks, Margaret. Okay, so yes. at this point, it looks like we've reclaimed a great deal of our time for this morning, which is fine, because I think we all have plenty to do. 
So at this time, we'll have a motion for adjournment. So moved. I'll make that motion. Support. Okay, who was, Marie, you moved? Marie moved, yep. Okay, Brenda supported. Yes. And you do not have to have a roll call vote because this is an adjournment. Uh, so we can just all thumbs up, wave your hands, say yes, or whatever else Yay. you want. Yay. Yes. We'll see you all at the next meeting. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yes.